I'm very pleased to yield two minutes to a new member of the committee, a valuable addition, an expert on Africa and HIV AIDS, Ms. Lee of California. The gentleman's recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentlelady for lead, uh, yielding. But also, let me just commend you, uh, Chairman Lilly, for your brilliance, uh, your leadership, and your hard work in crafting this very good uh, bipartisan bill. It's an honor to serve with you and our ranking member, Mr. Wolf, on the committee, because I see how you two work together to make this uh, bill that we could all support. Let me just uh, highlight three provisions of this bill. First, I'm pleased that it includes $949 million for humanitarian assistance in the Sudan. Of this, $210 million is specifically designed to help the victims of the genocide in Darfur. Having traveled there three times, I have seen the plight of the Darfurian people firsthand. This bill will help the United Nations and the African Union to bring food, clean water, security, and other basic humanitarian assistance. It also urges our good friend and ally, Egypt, to do more to help the genocide. Secondly, I am pleased that this bill includes nearly $5.1 billion to fight the global AIDS pandemic, including $550 million for the Global Fund to Fight TB, AIDS, and Malaria. In 25 years, HIV and AIDS has infected nearly 70 million people throughout the world and killed more than 25 million. We have made significant steps in the last few years, and this increase reaffirms our commitment to stop the spread of this dreadful disease. As the bill moves ahead, however, I hope we can go even further. As the New York Times pointed out in a recent editorial on Monday, we must try to provide $1.3 billion to the Global Fund this year and help put the world on course toward universal access to AIDS treatment by 2010, and I ask for unanimous consent to insert the, United, the New York Times editorial into the record. This bill, Mr. Chairman, also takes steps to recognize the importance of our Caribbean neighbors by urging the State Department to promote professional and scholastic exchanges within the region. This is a significant way to welcome the heads of the Caribbean countries, CARICOM, as they convene in Washington, D.C. this week to consider our common future as neighbors. This has a re is a region which has been, for the most part, neglected and ignored. In closing, Mr. Chairman, let me just say that this bill provides the correct path to global peace and security and does take care of and address the least of these. However, I only wish that the amount in this bill was more than just the 1 percent of the federal budget, which is what this is. This is a $34 billion bill, but I wish, Mr. Chairman, that it was $340 billion. Thank you, and I yield. Someone from Virginia. I recognize the gentleman from 